Hello again. Not been here for a while since we last did the video, which was about two months ago now. The lawn's come on a tree, as you can see. We had a few issues with some dog uh, urine stains and some other bits and pieces, but we got all those sorted. And today we're gonna give it a cut and then we're gonna plant the non-stop begonias for the season ahead. So those of you who are in my Facebook group will have seen that um, when I took some pictures of it last, but a bit of an issue with uh, the dog doing a wee there. So I dug out a patch from over there, which you can just see in the distance, that little patch there. So we cut that out and we stuck it in there, a bit of seed and that's coming through. I did that about 10 days ago. So you see up close, really nice and thick. The other issue we had was that um, just here about four years ago, it just went a funny colour overnight and I just couldn't get to the bottom of it. And we thought that had um, started again. So we give it a feed and I think in the end it was just a little bit of speckled in from where uh, the spread it wasn't working well because um, it was a bit damp and the feed got stuck and it wasn't flinging it out as good as it should. So we sorted that out, give it another feed and it seems to have sorted it out. So I'll just show you the patch over here where I seeded. Just uh, filled it with some root zone and just uh, put the seed in and then sprinkle some Jack's magic on it. And you can see there that it's coming through. Nice. Just there's no heat around at the minute and it, things are just taking forever. Plenty of water, but not a lot of heat. But today is quite hot actually. And hopefully this is the start of the summer because it's been an awful one so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it with the rotary first because it is a bit long. It's not been cut since Monday and that feed now is in the system and really working well. And then we'll go over it with the cylinder and see how it looks. And then we're going to get on with planting the non-stops like we did last year all the way along there. So I'm looking forward to this one. So uh, let's get it done. Oh yeah, so um, just wanted to say what I've done here in terms of feeding wise, just equilibrium, stellar, not in any galactic yet because it's just not been in a position to do it. We didn't want to do it until um, we'd sorted the yellowing out, which turns out we've sorted that now so we can get on with that. Might do it today if the weather holds for me, uh, wind keeps picking up and then dropping. Um, with it being an iron based product, you really want to be doing that on a still day because if it blows onto the paths and with it being hot now, it dries before you actually notice it, then it's going to leave a big orange stain on uh, your patio and it won't go down too well here because it's a grey colour so we'll get caught out. So always bear that in mind when spraying iron, just um, be careful and do it on a still day. all right then so let's have a look sun's out shining lovely oh it's just gone in and i was just about to sing oops i did it again so i'll have to wait till the next time for that look at that lovely and thick but not too thick we don't want too thick very lush what happened was uh the other issue that i had other than the speckling was um once i'd done the renovations at the what beginning of april I didn't cut it for a couple of weeks because it was cold and the feed hadn't kicked in. In fact, I don't even think I'd fed it. And we noticed there was a heck of a lot of annual meadow grass, like loads. So over three sessions, on my hands and knees, digging it out, filled three flexi tubfuls worth of annual meadow grass. So the lawn looked like it had been attacked by pigeons and whatever else. Uh, so we had to fill those in and wait for those to come through as well before we fed. So the lawn didn't take off without wouldn't leave those seeds behind which is most important so over here even in the shade a little bit damp because of all the rain we've had but hopefully now a few days of uh some nice weather tomorrow's supposed to be really hot as i think i said earlier 
and uh, we'll be on to something then. Uh, but not morning at all when you look at that, eh? What do you reckon? Lovely job, Lee. So over here, so it looks. I've lost my angle because I used to be able to walk over the other side and uh, get a decent distance shot, but now this bar thing's here, I can't. So it looks nice though. Can never, from this angle, never picks up as good as the human eye, I don't think. That looks nice, that looks really nice. So again, so you can mow over seed, don't worry about that. I think it's had a mushroom or a, uh, maybe a snail. But yeah, look at that. This is why we do it for days like this. Oh, yes. Oops, I did it again. Oh, yes. So over the next few weeks, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we've got a bit of a gig on here at the end of June, like a prom party. So we've got to get some uh, galactic on for that. Get the bedding in today. So that'll be nice and uh, big by the time that comes around. So that's like in the diary, so that's what we're aiming towards. Might have to trim that hedge up a little bit. Howard will probably do that. Uh, but for now, it's just getting uh, that bedding in. And what I do like about uh, parties is that, you know, you might get a bit of traffic on the lawn, but it gives you something in the, the distance to set yourself a target for. Because sometimes if there's nothing happening and it's just up to you to keep the lawn looking in order, just for order's sake, then sometimes you lose the the, the kind of, um, what can I say, like the carrot in front of the stick has gone. Whereas if there's something in the distance, like a, um, a party or some kind of gathering, it just keeps you uh, keeps you motivated to keep it going. So yeah, so let's go and start the bedding out. And then uh, this job is done. But yeah, look at that, that's just beautiful. I mean, this is, to be honest, it's the best it's ever looked this time of year for a long time. Even maybe the first year I did it, 2018, it looked pretty good. But that does look as good as, uh, as good as like a Premier League football pitch, doesn't it? It's the best view of the garden, this, because you get that acer in as well. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop uh, slavering now, so let's get on with some work. I'm just now watering in these non-stops. Give them a good sort now. These uh, last year in this area didn't do too well, I'm not sure why, but it was because I didn't get the sun or I didn't get enough water. But I would give them a bit more water to get the start because they soon dry out. The good thing about non-stops is you don't have slugs don't like them, so you don't have to put any slug pallets down. Um, the new slug pallets uh, are very good anyway, they don't really work as good as the old ones. But that's another thing that's been taken off anyway, so we can't use those. Uh, as far as the lawn goes, we're going to be getting that time now in a couple of weeks, because like nearly, you know, beginning of June, third of the way through uh, June next week. And we're going to be looking to do some uh, grooming on those next week, maybe this as well just to get on top of that to thicken it up. You don't want it thickening up too much because that's where the disease sets in, especially when it's very wet, like it has been, and it suddenly gets very warm, and that is perfect um, conditions for the likes of Fazarium and Red Thread, uh, which I've already seen some of my jobs get. Not my best ones, just some of the ones where it's not that intensive because I've that's where I filmed a video last year actually on red thread that just gets it no matter what you do because as I said last year in that mycelium on the top the red stuff that is uh, everything in there that could make it last seven years so no wonder you get it So you've enjoyed this one, a bit of a different one today. So see you later. Happy watering. See you later.